Welcome to Parkour Science, Episode 6, Physics of Landing and Impact, Part 2. Landing and impact are extremely important concepts as they will change the way you do every single parkour movement. If you have not watched Part 1, I recommend watching that first. To review from Part 1, the best way to have a clean, smooth, and minimal impact landing is to extend the feet and legs toward the landing zone. Landing on the balls of the feet is both safer because the balls of the feet are tougher but also because this increases the total landing distance and time by being able to actively slow your descent with the feet and lower legs as well as the upper legs and body. This is true for all types of landing, even on a vertical surface such as in a cat leap. As landing takes place after the initial constraints are in place, the concern for maximum efficiency in a static landing is based only on the factors which affect the safety of the landing. However, in the case of a landing with the intention of continuation of motion, the conservation or creation of momentum in a desired direction is also a consideration for efficiency. And this becomes a bit complex in techniques like the plyo. As we talked about in the precision videos, because of the parabolic trajectory of a jump, it is important in a static landing to aim your hips at the point you want to stop. And directly related to this, in the case of a continuation of motion such as a plyo, strides, or flow, your hips should be aimed to a point in front of where your feet are setting down. This will allow you to maintain valuable forward momentum into your next jump or movement. This is even true for a roll. In order to have an efficient roll, the hips must be headed in a path further than the feet are touching down. Many make the mistake of rolling after their momentum has stopped or nearly stopped. This presents itself usually when a person drops straight down into a roll or extends their feet forward like a precision, instead of mostly downward as it should be done for a roll. This results in the center of mass popping up before entering the roll, and this is a clear sign of an inefficient roll. The roll is incredibly complex scientifically, and we will go into much greater depth on that in a later set of videos. A question was asked as to whether a good slap out was better for reducing impact than a bad roll. The answer is maybe. This depends on what exactly is wrong with your roll. If the problem is rolling after stopping momentum, then the slap out will usually be a better choice. For instance, this slap out reduces impact much more than this roll because of the straight drop. If the roll is inefficient in another way, such as loss of forward speed or going too straight over the head, then the roll may reduce impact better than the slap out. But the dangers involved with making major mistakes in either outweigh the simple consideration of impact. My best advice? practice rolls and slap outs and get them very good before taking any significant drops. Work your way up slowly to rolling from heights, as with anything in parkour. There is a long-standing myth in the parkour community as well as the personal trainer community that the knees should not be allowed to pass 90 degrees while under load or impact. This myth has been widely perpetuated since 1961 due to a single very poorly done study where the doctor leading the study forced these results with little evidence. The study has since been entirely discredited and it is widely believed by the experts in the field of biomechanics and joint physiology that passing 90 degrees has no negative effect on joints or ligaments. That being said, if the drop is not too high and impact reduction is not as necessary, it is easier to maintain forward momentum and thus efficiency when the knees do not significantly cross the 90 degree angle. This is very important for a roll. When an object is slippery, it is important to increase the angle and come down on the object more than straight at it. Unless it's a cat leap, then you want to hit it with the more sideways force. This is especially important on rails. Railing landings are a double-edged sword. The curvature of the rail provides for normal force in the horizontal, which can supplement the frictional force and allow for easier static landings. But the narrowness of most rails means your hips must be very well aimed to land static. Also, when slippery, the same curvature on the back side of the rail will reduce friction and normal force, causing you to slip very quickly and uncontrollably. At a certain jump distance, around 12 to 14 feet for the average chasseur, it becomes impossible to land with a static landing on a flat surface with no ledge. This is because with so much forward momentum, a chasseur cannot get enough height to exert enough normal force to create the necessary friction to stop the body. You will either slip or topple forward. The maximum speed you can run and jump and still land static also happens to be the same running speed that is needed to maximize a wall run height all because of this equation and the usefulness of 45 degree angles. Thanks for watching. The next episode will be on the female parkour role. Yes, that is a thing. Comments and questions are welcome. 
please rate, share, and subscribe for more parkour science videos. For Dylan's parkour videos, check out his channel here. For continual updates, check out our Facebook page.